Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people they may gather in one place. This meeting of the Great Barrington Select Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and our parties with a right and a requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen to the meeting may do so by following the instructions at the top of the agenda. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we're unable to do so, despite best efforts, we'll post on the town's website an audio or video recording transcript other comprehensive rec record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Pursuant to Mass General Law 7C 30A Section 20F, after notifying the chair of the public body, any person may make a video or audio recording of an open session of a meeting of a public body or may transmit the meeting through any medium. The beginning of the medium, meeting, the chair shall inform other attendees of any such recordings. This meeting is being recorded by our secretary, by CTSB, by Berkshire Edge and other members of the public. And any member of the public wishing to speak at the meeting must receive permission of the chair. The listing of agenda items are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not, not all items listed may in fact be discussed. Other items not listed may be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. Okay, let's start with select board's announcements and statements. Lee has not joined us yet. So we'll start with Kate. Um, ticks are in full force. <laughs> so just um, be careful and, and check yourself. Thank you. Bill. Uh, no, nothing here. Ed. Nothing. And I have nothing to start the meeting. So we will go into the town manager's report. Steve, uh, getting started with the Houstonic Waterworks, I do not have anything new to report tonight. This is a, a standing topic on my uh, report list until we make some progress there. Um, so moving on to the elderly tax deferral pilot program. I just wanted to uh, mention to the board and mention publicly that we are hearing from a number of residents in support of this program. And uh, I'm just asking for a little uh, patience from residents who support this program while I work with staff and develop a, recommend, a recommendation in the form of an executive summary. We do anticipate having that completed uh, and ready to present to both the finance committee and the select board at the May uh, finance committee meeting. We're without a, a treasurer collector, as you know, at the moment, and we have a new assessor on board and we just need a little uh, time so that we can work on this. I prefer that you and the finance committee were able to uh, vote on this, uh, knowing what exactly you're voting on with your eyes wide open. So uh, we will continue to work on that and report back soon. Uh, next up, I'd, I would like to promote Amanda uh, DeGeorgis, our uh, library director, to provide an update on her reopening plans for both the Mason Library and Ramsdell. There she is. Hello. Uh, thank you guys for letting me talk this evening. I am happy to announce that Upstairs at Mason will be opening for browsing on Tuesday, May 4th. Uh, this will give our patrons access to our adult collection of books, audiobooks, DVDs, magazines, and four of our public computers. The copier and printing will be available again and we'll continue to offer curbside service as an alternative. Our hours will remain Tuesday through Friday, 1.30 to 4.30. We are asking people to limit their time to 30 minutes to allow others to enjoy browsing as well, because we do have some uh, building limits in, in effect. Uh, social distancing and masks are required as always. 
Um, we hope to open the children's room by appointment in the coming weeks. Uh, DPW has been very busy and our children's circulation desk has proved challenging because it's curved. Um, so we're trying to figure out the best way to provide a barrier for our staff. When we do open the children's room, it will be that Tuesdays through Fridays, 1 to 4.30. Um, Ramsdale will be opening soon, but we're trying to work out a few kinks with air circulation, as well as I need to add new staff. Um, curbside will continue there on Wednesdays from 1 to 5. And I have started the process of hiring four new staff members. And when that starts to happen, I can add back days and times of operations at both libraries. So I just ask for everyone's patience during this exciting but busy, <laughs> busy time. Um, so that's kind of the update from the libraries. Thank you. Hey, there's one Beth. hand up. Um, let me... Garfield, did you want to say something? Garfield, unmute yourself. You raised your hand. No, I actually had that lower, and I have lower hand showing for me, Steve. So I don't know how that happened. Okay. Um, um, may I add something? Yes, you may. The um, friends of the libraries have been, uh, since the weather got warmer, putting books out on the weekends, any weekend day uh, that rain's not forecast, um, that people can take and leave a donation or just take. <clears throat> we will continue to do that. I assume, uh, Amanda, that we will find a different place to store them <laughs> during the week. <laughs> well, for now, we're just going to put um, tarps over them, so don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> And, and if I could just uh, clarify Amanda's comments on hiring staff, these are not newly created positions. We're, we're filling vacancies and also uh, bringing back furloughed staff. So just to be clear. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Amanda. Yeah, thank you, Amanda. Thank you all. That's it. Okay. Uh, I think I'll move on to um, promoting Sean Van Dusen, our uh, public works superintendent, and he will provide us with an update on uh, spring, summer, and early fall projects that are just about ready to get underway. So go ahead, Sean. Can you guys hear me? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to give a, a sort of brief overview of some of the larger projects we have going on. It's certainly not all of them, but at least they'll give people a, a sort of understanding of, of just uh, it's where we're at. It's a, it's a pretty aggressive construction season that we have planned, and um, I just hope people will be patient in terms of um, understanding that. I'll try to do my best to return everyone's emails and, and phone calls, obviously, but it's, it's going to be a uh, an aggressive year, as I stated. Um, some of the projects that you might have already noticed that have started the uh, sidewalk extension in Housatonic, um, they're actually going to be finishing up the majority of the, the paving there, at least in the sidewalk, uh, probably tomorrow. We still have some crosswalks uh, to paint and some dynamic um, signs to put up, but um, that project's moving along. That is um, Jack Gonzalez construction, and that was a $230,000 project that was funded by a complete streets grant. The other project that's already started is the, the multi-use trail along Route 7. Um, that, that work, um, they did the prep work for the, for the paving that's gonna be put down there, um, but they um, are currently waiting on the approval for the retaining wall designed by from Mass DOT to start that portion of the project. It's probably four or five weeks away from completion. Um, that's a $507,000 project with 130,000 that was funded by a grant. Uh, the Ramsdale Library boiler replacement is out to bid currently. Um, we've had to hold off in the bid opening while I, I test for asbestos inside of the boiler itself. That was um, not part of the original um, plan. So we expect to open bids in two weeks for that and have it install in early summer. Um, the fire station roof in Usatonic um, is also out to bid currently. And we also have an asbestos um, test that's scheduled there the bid opening for that will also be in two weeks. Um, we went out to bid uh, for the front steps, um, the replacement of the historic front steps, as well as Taconic Avenue. Um, the low bidder for both of those projects was Algroni Construction. We um, held a pre-construction meeting last week with them to look at timeframes for both those projects. 
the lead time for the steps out front is is close to two months. They'll, they'll likely start six weeks in six weeks or so. I'm um, doing the prep work. That project came in at two hundred eighty four thousand um, dollars. They're going to be starting the retaining wall on Taconic Ave uh, in June. We're expecting that project came in at two hundred and forty thousand dollars. The phase one paving. Um, for this year, we went out to bid and the low bidder who was low by a significant amount did not have mass pre-qualification, um, the specific criteria that we had um, put in the specs. So we decided to go back out to bid and to get rid of the mass pre-qual um, specificity and make a specific um, pre-qual that was unique to our town um, so that we'd open up to some other bidders and um, the price difference between the first, the low bidder and the next bidder was significant. So we're back out to bid now for that. The phase one paving project work includes the paving of Magnolia, Maplewood Ave, Fairview Terrace, Elm Court, along with complete drainage work underneath Roster Street. Along with the paving work, um, the expansion of the, um, the river walk trail around Olympia Meadows is included. And in addition to that, graveling the rail trail from Satonic is also included in the phase one paving work. The phase two paving, which we're hoping to get out um, piggybacking um, on, on this project in a, in a month or so includes um, Highland, Pleasant Drive, Barrington Place, um, Haley Road, um, Berkshire, the Berkshire Heights neighborhood. We're sort of waiting to see where we come in with the first, the first project to see how much funds are available to do that, but we do expect to be able to do that work as well this fall. The other paving project that we're about to go out to bid for is the um, delayed project for the Triflex parking lot in Bentley Ave. We've had to do some work re-engineering um, some elevations and the footprint of that work on Bridge Street to accommodate the change in the um, 100 Bridge Street project. We had uh, designed that based upon the design they have. The as-built are different. And because there's contaminated ground, we need to be very careful about where we were putting our sidewalks and in the manner in which we did construction. So there's been some design changes that are happening right now. We hope to be about to bid for that in the next week or two. Uh, we went out to bid for the um, slip lining of the Main Street sewer line from St. James Place to Route 23 and 7, that intersection. Um, the low bidder was Kenyon Pipe, um, and so they'll be uh, starting work sometime in the, late this spring. Um, DPC Engineering is continuing to work on the inflow and infiltration um, analysis they do annually on our on our sewer lines and mapping their condition, which helps us aid in the um, wastewater capital planning. You'll see them working around, looking at the manholes and, and um, other places where there, there's uh, access to our sewer lines. Um, Time Bond began work on the stormwater man asset management plan. This was a DEP grant we received a year ago for $180,000. Um, we expect this will take the majority of the summer and, and fall to finalize. Um, LLB Architects has been given a contract to the design for the ADA axis at Ramsell Library. So we're hoping they'll be able to wrap that up this summer and we'll have a, a set of bid documents ready to go. Forza Engineering is doing a, um, a design uh, as, long, as well as creating bid documents for um, work at Memorial Field, as well as the two softball fields at um, Olympia Meadows. The Christian Hill Culvert, which we had funded a year ago, um, the draft design for that is done. We'll be going out to bid for that late summer with a, a start um, this fall, hoping to not have any sort of conflict with the work that's going on on the Red Bridge. Um, engineering work continues on Division Street Bridge, as you guys were made aware of last um, last meeting, and we're, we're hoping to go out to bid for that late this fall. We have finally finalized the contract with Guardian Energy to do work um, on the Houstonic um, community center, as well as town hall and the police station. This was part of the DOER green energy grant. We had some issues with the, the procurement um, interpretation, which we had to work out with DOER, um, but we have, we have finalized the contract and the legality of the, of the work that Guardian will be doing. So we'll be moving forward with that. I should have a, a time frame for the, the work within the next two weeks. Um, other projects coming up um, late this fall, um, the Main Street cr Crosswalk Safety, um, which Beta had done the design on, we're hoping to do that. Uh, the elevator replacement, which was funded a while back, 
we're waiting until we finish the front steps to then do work on the elevator. We don't want to do it at the same time. We also have to replace the compactor at the transfer station. Uh, the select board meeting room, we're making upgrades to uh, new furniture and hopefully some, some work on some speaker systems. We've been given uh, some numbers from BBE, the furniture company out of Pittsfield, and we hope to have a contract or a proposal from them in the next week or so. We also have design work to do on the mausoleum roof at the Mahaby Cemetery, uh, as well as work replacing a coil at Mason Library in their AC system. And we are about to start design for the upgrades to the trolley shelter at Belcher Square. So that is a brief overview of some of the projects. There are, are actually quite a bit more that I, I didn't get to, but those are some of the bigger ones. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. How do you know which way is up? Yeah. What are you doing on your summer vacation? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Just so everyone's aware who's on the meeting, all these projects have been approved previously at town meetings. None of this is new money. This is just all the projects that are finally, you know, we're, we're working on. So um, this isn't like Sean's drawing these out of a hat. Um, yeah. We've known about all of these. And so, so much got kind of put, not put aside, but had to wait because of COVID right? That it's all just kind of happening at once now. Yeah. It was a combination of COVID and we, we had set a very aggressive um, timetable for these projects to start. Yeah. There was a backlog. So we're, we're going to hammer them out and do the best we can. And we have close to 4 million in paving, I think this year, three and a half million. So a normal year is 800,000. We're going to finish that amount within the next three weeks. So it's going to be a busy year, but I think the work is important and I, I can't wait to get going on it. Um, Sean, Mark, maybe this is, is there a place that we could make sure that residents know which streets are going to be paved when, whether we use our social media or, um, I'm sure you're thinking about this already, but I'm just thinking with bridges out and, and, and all of these roads getting worked on that we're definitely probably going to have here from people if they don't if their way to work might get blocked without them knowing. So I think just, you know, staying on top of how we make sure everybody knows what's happening where, when, which I don't even know how you know that, um, I think would be probably really helpful. Yeah. Any major construction or road closures will be uh, announced through our code red reverse 911 system. And is that the, but, and paving is not a major or is that still, con is that considered major? I think if it impacts traffic, we'll get the word out through a code red. We'll also take advantage of our Facebook and, and Instagram accounts Great. as well. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Sean. We'll probably have you in at least once more uh, in the next, either next meeting or the meeting after just to continue updates. So it's a great way to get the word out. No problem. We appreciate it. Okay, next is licenses and permits. Uh, this is a spring real estate and outdoor coin operated license renewals. And I'm gonna let you do this for the sake of making this a little easier. Uh, number one, which is coin operated soft drink. And I'll recuse myself from all of those because although they don't give me a percentage of the <laughs> soda, I am an employee of Fairview Hospital. Okay, motion to approve the following. Um, Coin operated soft drink licenses, Bard College at Simons Rock, Berkshire South Regional Community Center, Cove Bowling and Entertainment, Fairview Hospital, Wind in the and Wind in the Pines. Uh, is there a second? I second. Uh, you want me to do this, Steve? If you're yes, recused? please. Uh, roll call vote. Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. And I. Unanimous. Okay. Next mm -hmm. is real estate sign licenses. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the following real estate sign licenses, Cohen and White Associates, Farnbrook Realty, Richard Property Agents, Great Barrington Owner, Helen Mullaney Real Estate, Lance Vermeulen Real Estate, Mac Caro Real Estate, Robertson Associates Realty, Stonehouse Properties, Wheeler and Taylor Realty, William Pitt Sotheby's Real Estate, Fairground Real Estate, Alden Country Real Estate Services. I have a second. No second. Motion by Ed, second by Bill. Any discussion? 
seeing none. Roll There's call, roll. one that I've been seeing. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I'm frozen. No, you're okay now. We hear you. We're frozen. Are you there, Kay? Are we back? Yes. No. <laughs> okay, let's take a vote. We can, can you hear me, Kay? I can hear you. Uh, yes, I, I can. Okay, go ahead now, what you were going to say. Now I can't. Okay, let's let's vote on this, then we'll discuss that. So we have a motion, we have a second. Roll call, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Uh, Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Kate, go ahead. There's um, one that I've been seeing signs out for that isn't on this list, but maybe I'll just bring that up to send an email to Amy and Carmen or. Yeah, that would be perfect. We'll take care of it. Okay, Karen Beckwith of the Great Barrington Fish and Game Club, 338 Long Pond Road for a temporary one-day beer and wine license for their Father's Day lobster and clam shoots on Sunday, June 20th, 2021 from noon to 6 p.m. Do I have a motion? Uh, motion to approve with some conditions. Um, do you want to hear from the applicant first or not? Uh, not necessarily. If, if they want to raise their hand, they can. Usually they just want this to be approved. Most of these conditions I'm gonna be doing with all events, um, that they comply with temporary sign by law, they comply with state COVID capacity limits at the time of the event, they comply with all other state COVID restrictions and they can work with our health agent to determine those. Encourage safe distance between attendees and require masks. I will second as amended. Okay, so I have a motion and I have a second. I've lost Kate at this point. Um, hold it, let me let her in. I'm not sure that's the right Kate. Mark, do you know if that's which Kate? It just says Kate. She's coming from a different device. That is Kate, uh, Mark. Okay, great. There she is. Okay, I have a motion and I have a second by Bill, motion by Ed. Um, roll call vote if there's no discussion. Seeing none, Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Next one is Great Barrington Art Market. Do you want to do the motion, Ed, instead of me reading it? Um, sure. Or, um, let me just go back to the agenda. Yeah. Uh, motion to approve an um, uh, close, what is it, a permit to close the road for the uh, close Church Street between Main Street and School Street on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. beginning May 8th to October 30th, 2021 for the Great Pinkton Art Market and the Farmers Market. I uh, will second that. You have conditions on that one? Um, I don't know that we're we're not permitting the events, just the road closure. Do we do the same conditions? No, you're right. You're correct on that. So, any discussion on that? Seeing none, it's a roll call vote. Lee. Hi. Yes. Kate. Hi, and I can. I'm no longer the market manager, <laughs> so there's no conflict in me voting on this this year. Thank you for disclosing that, Bill. Hi. <laughs> Ed. Hi. And I, it's unanimous. Next one is uh, green-minded events. Uh, do you want to make a motion? We'll see if they're on the line, if they raise their hand and want to speak. Sure. Uh, motion to approve with the following conditions. There are a few here, some from uh, DRT. This, just let me say this is Saturday, July 10th, Sorry. 2021, from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the fairgrounds. Um, event organizers would be in touch with the health department regarding food permits, plans for potable water on site, and COVID-related safety protocols, including 
state capacity limits at the time of the event and any other state restrictions, um, that they uh, comply with um, sign of the, the sign bylaw or temporary signs. Um, they should be aware that tents may require permitting through the building department. Generators must be set up by, a, by licensed electricians and are subject to inspection by the building department. Police department requires two detail officers reserved in advance, uh, one traffic, one on site. Um, all dogs, if permitted by the organizers, must be on leash and no pets are permitted to remain unattended inside cars. Uh, no people or pets are allowed in the wetland areas or in the grandstand or other hazardous buildings on site. Um, they encourage safe distance between attendees and require masks. Um, so. Let's have a motion in a second. Is there anyone here from the um, Green Minded events? If there are, raise your hand. So I'm not seeing anyone. Um, so I would just ask, Lee, go ahead if you. Yeah, I mean, I would love an explanation of this event or was, is this something that's been. Um... This is our third year. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's fine. Okay. Thank we you. don't have to vote on it tonight. It's not till July 10th. And we do ask recipients uh, of the license to be in attendance in case we have questions. I, I would kind of like to hear their plan to, you know, public consumption of marijuana is not allowed. This is a marijuana related event. Just their plan to keep people <laughs> from smoking on premises. Um, if there isn't a hurry, that'd be well, great. Um, Ed, if you want to withdraw your motion, Bill, withdraw your second. Okay. Um, yeah, so that would be good if they could, if, the, if those conditions are available to them in advance, just so they know it's coming. Yeah. Mark, can you have someone in your office get a hold of them for our next meeting? We'll do. We'll push this to the next agenda. Yeah. Um, next would be Andy Morrow for the American Legion, Murphy Leary, post 298 for permission to hand out poppies for donations in Great Barrington and the village of Housatonic during the month of May. Ed? You're muted. You're muted. Motion to approve. I'll second. second. So, motion by Ed, a second by Bill. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And aye. It's unanimous. Andy Morrow for the Murphy Leary American Legion Post 298 for permission to hold a boot drive between Gas House Lane and JB Hill Oil on Saturday, May 22nd, 2021, with a rain date of Saturday, May 29th, 2021. Um, I probably should have added this to the last one, but motion to approve, um, you know, assuming or requiring that the uh, solicitors wear a mask. So that'll go for both of those. That's fine. Bill, do you have a second on this? Yeah, I'll second with that condition, sure. So, so Ed made the motion. Bill second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Next one is Bill Cook and Deb Phillips for a driveway permit at 26 Dresser Avenue. Bill, you want to? Officially, I think I'll recuse myself for this one, but I can answer any questions. Um, I need to recuse myself. I'm in a butter. So if anyone is angry at Bill, here's your chance. <laughs> do I have a, do I have a motion? It only the two of you. Yeah, um, I move to approve the driveway permit at 26 Dresser Ave. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Public hearing. The part wine MA, Mass, retail LLC for a wine and malt package store license at 28 Railroad Street, continued from the meeting of April 12th, 2021. Motion to open the public hearing. Motion to reopen the public hearing? Uh, mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Okay, I'll second that. Uh, roll call vote, Lee. Aye. Uh, Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. A presentation by the applicant, please. Hi, this is David Bruno from Dave Par Wine. Thanks for having me on tonight. Um, just wanted to give you guys a little overview on who I am and uh, what we plan to do with Dave Par Wine. 
Uh, I moved to Sheffield in January of 2020. My wife, uh, Molly Landman, works for Jane Iredale. Uh, my two sons go to Hevra ECC. And I basically have been in retail my whole life, but it was fashion retail before wine retail. Last two years, I've been consulting for a retailer based in New York called Verve Wine and have been helping them open uh, various uh, hospitality projects. Our most recent one uh, in December of 2019 was Goodman's Bar, which was a wine bar inside of Bergdorf Goodman. Um, also helped them get started on their restaurant projects, One White Street, which is opening soon in Tribeca and a farm over in Ghent called Rigger Hill Farm. Uh, here in Great Barrington, I'm consulting uh, with your next applicants, uh, Rupert and Sandy on Two Flower, an all day cafe at 34 Railroad Street. And I wanted to kind of just kind of give you an idea of what Depart is going to be. Um, essentially, we are going to be a boutique wine, beer, and beverage uh, retail experience uh, with a really heavy focus on education and customer experience. Uh, we are only going to sell beverages, uh, no other products other than some select books uh, and some, some glassware accessories to drink uh, and enjoy wine. We're basically uh, taking a really targeted approach on this just to kind of give customers uh, the opportunity to engage with our staff. This is gonna be a bunch of sommeliers, uh, very highly trained sommeliers that love to talk about wine and beverage. And we're gonna really focus on small production, uh, family owned uh, grower winemakers, uh, uh, farming sustainably, oftentimes that's uh, considered organic or biodynamic. Um, and we're gonna also kind of take a community-minded approach to what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're gonna sign a pledge called the 15% pledge, which uh, requires us to stock 15% of our inventory by BIPOC uh, owned or made uh, individuals, um, which is a, it's an interesting uh, take on, on retail, particularly in the wine and beverage space. And um, a lot of our development actually here is gonna be exclusive developments that we're working with wine growers, cider makers, uh, kombucha makers in the Northeast, uh, heavily in uh, the Finger Lakes and the Hudson Valley, um, working to create uh, custom packaging, which will oftentimes be boxes, bags, um, smaller format packaging that's meant to be drunk uh, quickly and ready to go, kind of easy things to take on the go. Um, a good portion of our inventory will be in that in that category. Um, our store here at 28 Railroad Street is going to be basically, um, if you've seen the Gifted Child, it's a bit very long space. So we're going to have wine and beverage kind of down the two sides, a long table in the middle for um, educational experiences and uh, a few refrigerators uh, to keep our product cold. Um, very clean, kind of wood focused, modern approach using all the natural light that we get in this space. Um, but again, you know, a, a big portion of the way our, our experience is going to be is based on education and, and learning and discovery. Um, like I mentioned, I'm working with Two Flowers, so we're going to be developing the beverage program in partnership with, with Rupert and Sandy. Uh, most of the selections for wine and beer that are available on, on the menu over at Two Flowers, should they receive their license, will be available for retail sale over here at Depar. Um, and we're going to kind of tie some of those programs that I was talking about in the custom package program uh, to causes here locally in the Berkshires. Um, some, of, some of the projects that, that speak to me right now for some of these programs are the Railroad Street Project, uh, Stanton Home, and the People's Pantry. And as, as we you know, get our license and we're able to develop these projects, we're going to kind of expand those give back uh, programs when we, we develop these programs with local growers. Uh, there will be a location of, of Depar in New York City. Uh, it will be in the Moynihan train hall in the new Penn Station. Uh, that will come online sometime Q3, Q4 next year. And we hope to add uh, quite a few services to Great Barrington once, once that business starts to take hold with, uh, you know, pre-ordering, uh, home delivery, uh, e-commerce, uh, really ramp up our, our events and, and catering kind of uh, capabilities uh, to do private events. And uh, hopefully by holiday, you know, we're able to participate in some local events as they come back online here, uh, like the Sip and Stroll and uh, really work with our, you know, kind of robust corporate uh, neighbors around here to, to do, develop corporate gifting programs, et cetera. Um, we're essentially a, a group of sommeliers. So, so being in person and doing things uh, in person is, is very dear to us. So we're looking forward to everybody getting vaccinated and, 
getting getting back on on kind of the events program. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I, I have I think our our presentation was posted to the website. Um, I'm here for any questions or comments or. We're just really excited to join the, the, the vibrant new re retail uh, kind of scene here on Railroad Street. So let's start with any public comment uh, for or against the license. Just raise your hand or if you're on a cell phone, hit star nine. I don't see anyone raising their hand. Give it another second. Before we close the public hearing, we'll ask the board if they have any questions. Yeah. No. A motion to close the public hearing. So moved. And second. Uh, roll call. Um, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Phil. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I. Do I have a motion, Ed? Motion to approve the license. I'll second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll um, call. Oh, go ahead, Kay. I just, you know, when we released or gave two licenses, and I know that I'm going to be standing out on my own on this one, and that's fine. Um, when we gave the license to the co-op and and um, Rubner's a couple years ago, I think there was a real strong feeling from some board members, myself included, that that was gonna be it for a while until we kind of saw how the dust settled. And since then, we have watched Big Y expand drastically their beer and wine program. And I, I recognize that that's a very different um, program than what what David is trying to do here in the, in that gifted child space. Um, but I do know that they're really pushing to undercut all of the other small businesses that are existing in this area already. Um, and I think we also heard a lot from community members about how much they wanted to see beer and wine and food be sold together. Um, so I feel like we're taking a backtrack from that. Um, and, um, and, and although I really appreciate the, the promise of the 15% of the, the stocking and, and the donations to the local businesses, I just also really worry about how not inclusive and elitist main street and downtown are becoming, there's more and more people that just don't feel like it's for them or that they can be included. And, um, and I know it's capitalism and I know that we want these buildings to be filled and many other downtowns are, are dying because, because those small businesses aren't lasting and we should feel really blessed. Um, but I just, I have some reservations, I guess. Thank you, Kay. Anyone else? So roll call vote, Lee? Aye. Kate? No. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I. It passes four to one. Next one is the Car Coffee Bar LLC for an all alcoholic restaurant license at 34 Railroad Street. Continued from the meeting of April 12th, 2021. To have a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. And second. Roll call. Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I? Applicant, like to make a presentation, please. Hi, yes, this is um, Sandy Matthews and Rupert Jones and I are the owners of Two Flower Cafe, um, which uh, the coffee bar uh, was the original name, but so we're doing business as Two Flower and we're in the old Botanica space. And um, a little bit about us is uh, we live in Monterey and we ran two cafes down in New Jersey for a while, for quite a few years. And when we closed those up and decided to move up to Monterey full time, we didn't really have expectations of running another place, but we were frequent customers of Botanica. 
and we're really um, sad to see them close up shop. And um, so basically, you know, we felt they had really great food, a great atmosphere, really amazing coffee and drinks and things like that. And we felt it was important for Great Barrington to continue to have that. Uh, so we purchased the space, we did some renovation, um, uh, and, you know, we've opened up now as light fair, small bites, um, seven days a week coffee shop. And we're looking to expand that into um, evening hours. And um, sort of giving um, basically what the customers have been asking for, which is just a nice casual place to uh, come in for a drink, maybe before or after Mahaley or something like that. So um, my what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Rupert um, step in and sort of talk more about the operating plans of what we want to do, and he can fill in any details for that. Happy to do it. Uh, this is Rupert Jones. Um, I've seen some of you down here at the space at, at, at Two Flower. Um, what we've, we've been doing and what we, what we really want to do moving forward, right now we're a, an eight o'clock in the morning till four in the afternoon space, we're doing small plates of food, sandwiches, salads, um, crafted coffee drinks. Um, what we'd like to do is expand that to sort of uh, probably till 10 o'clock in the evening, um, table service only, uh, no bar service. Um, as Sandy said, after the theater, before the theater, hopefully the movie theater opens up soon as well. Um, and that, that's the sort of space that we're looking to create. Uh, not a place necessarily where you're a particularly young crowd coming in. I, uh, I you know, we're, we're targeting sort of 40 and up crowd, people who would just like to have a nice glass of wine and, and get on their way rather than um, particularly heavy drinkers. Um, and, I, and I think that's, pretty much where we're at we're happy to answer any questions you guys have okay so is there anyone in the audience to speak for or against just raise your hand or if you're on a phone star nine i see no one does anyone on the board have any questions I just had yes, one. Um, thank you, Rupert and Sandy. Um, am I correct to say that you'll be um, providing food to Depar um, when they have wine tasting, or will there be some sharing of, of food uh, from your establishment to the the new wine? Uh, yeah, I, th I think we will be working with David, um, doing any sort of food that he needs down there. I think also um, some of the wine tasting can, will be done here. Um, since we'll have more space for that sort of thing. So yeah, we will be doing some food for that. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. And second. Motion and <coughs> second. Roll call vote, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And aye. It's unanimous, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, motion to convene as sewer commissioners for sewer abatements for July 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2020. So moved. And second. Roll call, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And myself. Do I have a motion for to uh, for the sewer abatements that are on the list in front of us? Motion to accept the abatements as provided in the packet. Thank you. So I was trying second. to say. I'll second. I have a motion by Ed, a second by Bill. Is there any discussion, any questions, audience or board? Roll call vote, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And aye, it's unanimous. Uh, we never take a motion to go out of sewer commissioner, so 
or to reconvene as selectmen? Do we need? Yeah, to? go ahead. Go ahead and do that, please. Motion to reconvene as select board. I'll second. Thank you, Lee. Aye. Tate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. Aye. So we're back as select board members. Next is the Str Strategic Sustainability and Livability Commitment Committee. It's appointment and committee size. And I think Natalie, you are on the line. Hi, can you all hear me? We can. Great. Hi, it's Natalie Narofsky. I'm the chair of this committee. Um, I am coming before you today with two items. We have a committee member that we would like to ask you to consider appointing as well as changing the committee size. Um, I submitted the letter from our applicant that we would like to nominate, but I think I missed the packet deadline. So I was wondering, Mark or Steve, if it would be okay if I read the letter? Yeah, it would be. Okay, is that all right? It's not very long. Um, so um, we have John Morrell, who's a professor at, of literature at Simon's Rock, who's been coming to all of our meetings and has been really engaged in the Municipal Vulnerability and Preparedness Project that we've been really engaged with, with Chris for uh, the past year. So I'll just read his letter. Um, Dear Town Manager, I write to express interest in joining the Strategic Sustainability and Livability Committee. I'm a current resident of Great Barrington, having also lived in Sheffield and West Stockbridge. In recent years, I am grateful to live in the Berkshires and begin to call this region home. My children are born here and my family begins to develop roots in the area. Issues of sustainability and livability are front of mind. I would be excited for the opportunity to engage with go citizen governance around these long-term planning goals. Interested to learn more about sustainability and issues initiatives in Great Barrington. I have been attending SSLC meetings since December, and I participated in the recent MVP climate justice trainings. In both contexts, I've been heartened by the committee's focus on the social dimension of sustainability, and I have been inspired by the conversations that engage thoughtfully with the ways that climate change connects to issues of community vulnerability and resilience. I'm eager to continue these conversations and excited for the possibilities of MVP grant project and other initiatives. Last paragraph. The work of this group also intersects with my professional interests. I teach literature at Bard College at Simons Rock and my interests, my areas of research include climate change, environmental policy and food studies. In addition, I am currently a member of the sustainability committee at Simons Rock and I hope I might serve as a point of connection between the college and the town on this vital issue. I see my potential work on the Strategic Sustainability and Livability Committee as an opportunity for further learning and growth. And I'm enthusiastic about this chance for service and supportive issues that I care about. Thank you for your consideration. Signed by John. Okay, so let's take this up first because you have a second request, but let's do this first. Do you have Great. a motion? Uh, yeah, a motion to appoint John Morrell to the S Strategic Sustainability and Livability Committee. Would second that. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Lee? Aye. Tate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Natalie, go ahead with your second request. Great. Um, so we would also like to request that the board consider reducing our committee size from nine to seven. Um, we have had some people uh, resign from the committee, mostly due to I mean, things that happened during COVID and just busyness. Um, so it's been challenging for us to achieve a quorum. So by reducing from nine to seven, um, we'll have six now that you've appointed John. Um, so we we'll just ask for consideration of that. And we still would have one vacancy and we are definitely seeking to fill that. Um, so that's, yeah, that's our request, but also interested in if there's any questions or um, concerns about that. Do I have a motion? Motion to reduce the size of the Strategic Sustainability and Livability Committee, it's fun to say, from nine to seven members. A second. Any discussion? Roll call, Lee. Aye. Lee. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And it's unanimous. Thank you, Natalie. And let's Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Point out, that's not the only committee with a vacancy, so contact the select board or town manager's office and find out where you can volunteer. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, if I can just add, Natalie, if you could forward me John's email address so that we can send a, an appointment letter to him directly, that would be great. Perfect, I can do that. May I just say one more thing? Of course. I believe that we just, the town just posted um, an agenda for a joint select board and planning board meeting on Thursday, where we will be presenting an update on the MVP process thus far and engaging the boards in next steps. And so I'm just really excited about Thursday's meeting and to further engage with you all in this critical work. 
um, because climate change and racial equity are one and the same. And um, we look forward to continuing that conversation with you all. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Cultural Council appointment of three members. Do I have a motion? Motion to appoint Erica Milkey, Allison Zivin, and Alyssa Haskins Vaughn to the Cultural Council. A second. So I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Roll call Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Thank you to all three of you. Yes, thank you very much. In non-COVID times, we would have you speak. It gets a little cumbersome by Zoom. So, and I, we are very happy to have people of your quality to apply. Next is a informational one. And I'm gonna go over this because there's a little bit of confusion. So because of the movement of the town meeting from May to June, we need to adjust our schedule. So this is what's being proposed. May 10th would be our regular Monday night meeting. May 12th, a Wednesday, would it be reorganization meeting. It says reorganization only on the wrong one, but I'm not promising that. <laughs> it, it's a reorganization. It won't be a two hour meeting, but it may have other topics on it as if needed. Probably not because it's 10th is two days before, but just in case. May 24th would be our re second regular meeting in May. June 7th and 10th is the town meeting nights. We know that. June 14th, which is the second Monday, a Monday, would be our regular meeting. And the only discussion we have is do we want to, I think we need a second meeting. Every time we plan not to have a second meeting, we end up scheduling a second meeting, and especially in the summertime. So we can do it either the 21st or 28th, both Monday nights. Um, it, it uh, doesn't really matter to me. Um, either one, does someone have a preference? 14? What, what's that? It was 14? 21st or 28th. Oh. We are okay. meeting the 14th for sure. We just need a second night in June. I mean, if, if for some reason we have nothing on the agenda, we will cancel it, but that's never happened in my time, so. Well, I'm gonna say 21st, and if anyone cares, I don't mind changing. Is everyone okay with the 21st? Bill, stop smiling. I know you won't be here. <laughs> Lee, you okay with the 21st and Kate? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that will be our meeting schedule. Maybe we'll put a clean copy in the next packet, just to, if I wasn't clear enough. And for anyone else who in the audience, the audience uh, had has six panelists and 25 attendees at its peak. It is now six and 20 for those who uh, would like to know. Okay, next is a review of the sidewalk agreement extension with Moon Cloud at 47 Railroad Street. Mark, do you wanna explain this? Sure, so this is just a renewal of the sidewalk agreement that's um, been reviewed and approved by the board year after year going back to the Pearls days in that location. Um, the reason they would, the applicant would like to secure uh, this approval, even though it's really not necessary in COVID times because of, uh, of the state of emergency and, and the, um, uh, the board's um, ability to permit outdoor uh, drinking without uh, this, they would like to secure this so that if and when uh, the state of emergency is lifted, perhaps later this summer, they would be able to continue serving outdoor. So this is just a, uh, a renewal that would expire uh, on December 31st of 2021. And there's no uh, changes suggested in the renewal from last year to this year. Any questions? And if anyone's curious, if the state of, if and when the state of emergency is lifted, the town right now's plan is to continue outdoor dining individual restaurants will have to just apply for the license, which they don't have. Moon Cloud will have theirs as they've had it since the days of Pearl. They, they have to apply to us or to ABCC? I believe they would have to amend their uh, annual license with us as the local approving authority and also the ABCC. Could we 
be prepared. This is for another time, but if you could think about what it would take for us to be prepared to do that quickly in case it happens suddenly. Any other questions on this? A motion to approve? So moved. And second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Okay, next we have, and Mark, if you just promote Chris in case we need him at this point, the review of the draft annual town meeting warrant and make recommendations on the proposed budgets for Berkshire Hills Regional School District and the Great Barrington Wastewater Treatment Plant. So Mark and I have identified five warrant articles that we need to, um, to make a recommendation on. And the rest we, we have done in our many, many meetings, but these, we have not made a final recommendation. Some are, are quite clear and others I'll have Mark or Chris give an explanation. First would be uh, Warren Article number six, the FY22 wastewater treatment plant budget. We've discussed this. We've just not made a formal recommendation. Do I have a motion? Motion to uh, endorse. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And aye. Next one is the FY22 Regional School Assessment. Motion to endorse. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And aye. It's unanimous. Now, the next three, I don't know that we've talked about as much, so we'll amend chapter 91 of the town code for the schedule of town clerk fees. So we wanna give an explanation of that one, either Chris or Mark, or anyone who wants to give an explanation for that matter. Sure, I can take that one. Um, so our town clerk is, is suggesting that we consider uh, increasing certain fees in her office uh, and you'll notice that they're noted by a strike through uh, and the new fee is noted uh, as underlined in the proposed warrant. The final draft of uh, the warrant may, may not include all the fees as this draft does, but uh, this draft is subject to review by our uh, town council at this point. Okay, do you have a question? <laughs> I, I don't so much have a question as a concern. Um, I do know that in our town that the price for getting a birth certificate and a death certificate and a marriage certificate are really low um, and probably do need to go up. I, at the, however, or at the same time, right now we all have to get real IDs or we, you know, that's postponed until the end of the state of emergency, but we'll all need them. And for somebody like me, I would need a birth certificate and a marriage certificate if I didn't have them on hand. And I feel like for a lot of people that can be, and if you've been married multiple times with multiple name changes, you have to get all of your marriage certificates. Um, and I just feel like it's a real financial burden for people. And I, I recognize that it's a financial burden for our town for us to not charge more. Um, but I, I'm wondering if we can just wait <laughs> like one more year. Um, that's all I'm just like, or could it just be $5 or it's just, it, it's just, it's something that just bugs me how expensive it is to get one of these real IDs so you can fly around the United States. And, and I just don't want to be part of making it more difficult for people that don't have money. The, um, when we last raised all the fees, there was a motion on the floor to not raise these few because it seems sweet, but there were real consequences to the town, uh, budgeting, you know, it, at this point, it's ridiculously low. Uh, nothing is $2. Um, uh, I, I don't want to speak for our town clerk, but I know uh, she has mentioned in the past that uh, this is a significant source of revenue for her office. And uh, a number of these uh, requests come from non-residents. Anyone else? Let me try to see if we have a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to, um, and I've been using the wrong word, saying endorse, recommend uh, this article. I, I'd second that. Discussion. And, and I, Kate, I do hear what you say, and, and I don't disagree, but I think in this case, 
two dollars, we can't even be covering our costs. So. No, I don't think that we are. Um, and but I don't know, I, five dollars. I guess t- I mean ten doesn't seem like a lot of money to a lot of people, but sometimes for a lot of families, ten dollars is three days worth of food. I just it just is for me. It's it's I I just. I guess this is more of an issue with a federal thing that I have that the real ID is a, is a, is a poor tax. And I just don't want this. I don't want to be a part of that problem. Understood. Anyone else? So it's a roll call vote. Lee. Aye. Kate. No. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I, it's four to one. It passes. Next is a reaccept portion of Manville Street, discontinued on May 7th, 2018, as a public way. Motion to recommend. Second. Does everyone understand? I, I assume everyone understands this. This goes back to the project that was there and is no longer there. So, oh. any, any yeah. discussion? Roll call vote, Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. And the last one is the tax increment financing for 79 Bridge Street. Somebody want to give a brief overview of that? Chris, can you tackle that one, please? Sure. Uh, a TIF agreement is one of the few economic development tools, direct economic development tools that towns like Great Barrington have. And what that does is sets up a special tax agreement where uh, somebody makes a significant improvement to a commercial, typically a commercial building. Um, and the value of all those improvements is not assessed uh, right away. It's, it's uh, gradually built in over the course of 10 to maybe 20 years. Um, so as a recent Local example, the old Bryant School on Church Street uh, was, uh, there was a TIF granted there. So a significant amount of money went into restoring the building. And over the course of, I think, 10 years, that full assessment is gradually brought in. So in year 10, they're paying the full assessment. But in year, year zero, they're not penalized for making significant improvements to the building. So that's what a TIF is. Uh, the owners of the former Searle School have, uh, uh, are seeking uh, that, a similar agreement. And the process is for town meeting to provide the authorization for the school <laughs> to negotiate that agreement and sign on, on the town's behalf. So, so um, that's what this is, seeking town meeting authorization to, to negotiate and enter into a TIF agreement. The confusing part of this at town meeting is always someone will ask, and rightfully so, so what's the agreement? And that's putting the cart before the horse because this gives us the right to negotiate the agreement. Exactly. So I, I, it, it I often, often are tied to a certain amount of employment and things like that. Yes. But we, we stipulate benefits we want. Exactly. Any other questions or discussion? Does that, I'm just, I feel like I should be know this. Does that go back to town meeting um, or once that's negotiated, it's no, negotiated? They, they authorize Thank us you. to negotiate. Great. Thank you. Correct. Anyone else? Seeing no one, um, we had a, did we have a motion? I think so. Motion to uh, recommend. Second. Second. Uh, roll call, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I, it's unanimous. So those are the ones that we had not gotten to. And we'll see a final version of the warrant in two weeks. You'll be signing the final version of yes. the warrant on May 10th. May 10th. Okay. Uh, citizen speak time. No one, select board time. Lee? Yes, um, I apologize for having to be late. Uh, 
for the meeting. Um, some uh, request came through me from um, an establishment in downtown wondering if there was a way to keep on the gazebo lights um, a bit longer into the evening. And the reasoning was that um, there's quite a few um, diners that have been taking away their food and um, they've been directing diners to go to the, um, the town green and sometimes they, um, they'd like to use the gazebo. So we were wondering, or they were wondering if there's any way to keep lights on perhaps, you know, till 10 or 10.30 whenever um, establishments close for that reason. So it was just kind of a, a general quest that came through. Um, Mark, Mark will look into that and see what it will take. Yeah, my, my understanding is that those lights are turned on and off at the panel in the basement here uh, at Town Hall, but there's a chance we could maybe put that on a timer. So let me check with uh, Sean and see if we can make that happen. That would right. be wonderful. Thank you. Anything else, Lee? No. <laughs> Kate? Um, I did notice when we were going through the regular meeting schedule that the meeting on September 27th um, is the, the end of Rosh Hashanah. I'm sorry, Yom Kippur. It's one, uh, now I can't remember what I saw, um, but I'm just wondering if at some point we may want to reschedule that one. That's not, let me just look at the calendar. because. Yeah, I feel like maybe I read the calendar wrong. Yeah, we'll look, we'll check because I usually yeah. check those. Uh, I, I usually do too. And that's, I guess, why I looked again and I, I was surprised, so. Okay, we will definitely check into yeah. that and come back. Um, <laughs> well, and maybe I don't have it on my calendar, so um, let me just look here. I have it as September 14th and 15th is, run, is Young Kipper and Rosh Hashanah. I have right. Young Kippur as the 20, oh, that's 2020. I apologize. Okay. It's showing no, me the wrong good. year. No, I'm glad, glad you brought it up. We can make mistakes. Yeah, totally. That's yeah. That's why I was double checking. Awesome. I appreciate that. Anything else? Yeah. Anything else, Kate? No. Bill? No. Ed? No. And I have nothing. Um, media time. Can you hear me this time? Yes, we can. Yay. <laughs> uh, I just wondered whether the resignation of Karen Sink was expected or was it a surprise? Mark, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I, I would prefer not to comment on a personnel matter. Thank you. Anyone else from the media? By unanimous consent, we are adjourned. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.